Good morning, fellow travelers on the road with me in cyberspace. Um, it is now my uh, third day headed out on the road. Uh, my intention is to be in Illinois tonight and um, then to actually start on 66 in the morning because I'd like to check out a little bit of Chicago while I'm out there. So I wanted to share a little bit about my day yesterday. One of the things I did was I uh, went past, morning guys, I went past the highest point um, east of the Mississippi. So that was interesting. And my little Kia Soul just kept trucking along. And I went through Pennsylvania. And a little bit of a hard part of that is that um, I had gone through with Sammy um, when we moved from Texas to here. So, uh, you know, it was kind of a little bit painful because I was remembering. But what I'm trying to do is to be very, very thankful for the memory that we have. Uh, another uh, thing that was really occurred to me, I hadn't thought about it before, but um, I am going to be coming back to fall foliage. I left and it was green and I'm going to come back. I'm sure it's going to be maybe even gone. Um, I, I realized this as I drove through uh, through Pennsylvania and watched. It looked like somebody had taken um, and, and thrown a, a green carpet over lumps of whatever, you know, like sweeping stuff under the rug. And it was just like this um, sculpted carpet of green, and and then it would be big. Uh, uh, black splotches, which were actually shadows of clouds. It's, it's one of those things if a picture wouldn't even say how wonderful it was, you know. So that was a good thing. Um, and let's see, I, I'm, I had to make a list today because I wanted to make sure I did not uh, leave anything out. Um, yeah, and it was interesting because the, the leaves started changing and they were brown, and I'm like, well, that's really boring. And then so there would be splotches of yellow, and then there'd be splotches of greeny yellow, and then it got red, and then some were burgundy. So I'm, I'm hoping that Connecticut has as beautiful as I've uh, seen there. And um, then I decided, so this is one of the things I think was important for my trip, is that I wanted to do something for myself. So... Uh, you know that I'm dropping these um, rocks, which I still didn't bring one in from the car to show you. I hope to do that tonight. If you just go to my timeline uh, or to the GVC Roaming Rocks page, you'll see, you know, me dropping the rocks. So I decided yesterday, um, I was looking at a map, and I said, uh, oh, I'm going to go right near uh, a Punxsutawney. And y'all know who Punxsutawney Phil is, right? I mean, you know, the groundhog. So I said, I'm just going to take a, a side trip to Punxsutawney. And I did. And, of course, it, with my amazing wisdom, I went the wrong way first, so I got a little unexpected side trip. Now, one of the things that occurred to me as I made that trip was that, that side trip, that unexpected side trip, um, I have a camera right there, and I didn't just pull over and take a picture. Like, there was this picture of fields and fields and fields, and right in the middle of the fields was a cemetery. And it was like, oh, wow. And I kept driving, and a little while later, there was another one, but it had a little church. And I said, oh, isn't that beautiful? But I didn't stop and take a picture. So it makes me wonder, um, how many times in our lives do we not stop and enjoy whatever it is, whether that was skipping past Punxsutawney because I, I said, now no, I can't do this, and I got glacial sugar things to do. Dear God, is that not the story of our lives, places to go, things to do? Um, maybe we should rethink that, and if we feel like taking a break, take a break. So I did when I went to Punxsutawney, and um, another thing, every time I leave a rock, I am – asking someone to take a picture of me leaving the rock. And that has two purposes. The first is because I am not a fan of selfies, okay? I'm just not. The second thing is I get to meet someone and tell them about the rocks and 
Some of them I tell about my journey. Then I decided, you know, it's not good to drive for long periods of time without getting out, stretching, walking. So I decided to walk up and down the streets of Punxsutawney. I will post those pictures later. Um, and lo and behold, there was a gift shop. And I thought, ooh, a gift shop. You know, now, caution, beware. You know, this. I have to remind myself, this trip's for me. It's not for bringing back souvenirs that the people I love will say, oh, how nice, and shove them in a corner somewhere, and eventually out they go to the trash or Goodwill or whatever. So, But I went into this little stop because I knew I needed one thing. The one thing I didn't pack for my journey was a wine glass. And it, I love my morning coffee, and I love my evening uh, or late afternoon glass of wine with cheese and crackers. I brought the cheese and crackers. I brought the little bottles of wine. I didn't bring a wine glass. And I do not get into the whole thing about eat, drinking wine out of a paper cup. <laughs> no. So I bought a, I don't know if I, how you can see this. Let's see. This is, I don't know if you've ever done live, but everything is backward. So that's my Punxsutawney wine glass. And uh, with any luck, it's going to make it all the way to uh, California and back. Uh, speaking of California, um, I was debating whether I was going to go there. And then a friend of mine messaged me. And I said, yeah, I think, I, I think I'll go to California, you know, all the way and stop. And then this morning I heard about the horrible fires. And they're in the area I used to live. Um, I was shocked. And so we're going to remember to please keep in prayer the people that are having the fires. What a year it's been. So anyway, yes, Lynn, I definitely do need a wine glass, and I'm going to bring it to your house when I stop by so um, we can toast out of it. Okay, um, so another thing I had in my mind yesterday was uh, from the beginning of the trip was always go local wherever I went try to find local stores local restaurants so yesterday morning I decided to treat myself morning Denise yes I decided to treat myself to a breakfast at a local restaurant so I found one and it was cute and quaint and I pulled in and and uh, I ordered my breakfast now I put up a challenge for those of you who really know me as to what I would order for breakfast because it's always the same thing I will say I was disappointed that nobody even tried to get it but those who love me know that breakfast for me if I go out is uh, home fries and cottage cheese that's what I like so I ordered my home fries and cottage cheese with onions and peppers and I said um, oh make them dark and crispy that's the way I like them well they came and they were they were like anemic is the only word I can think of they were not dark and crispy they were white with a little brown here a little brown there and uh, so I, I started eating it because I had to get on the road and the waitress came over and said oh how is everything and I said well these really aren't crispy and and she said oh well I I put crispy uh, see see and she showed me the tag I put crispy on the tag but she didn't offer to get them crisped up and she didn't offer to make me new ones so I ate them. She asked, how's the cottage cheese? I mean, cottage cheese? You took it out of a dish and out of a package and put it in a dish, I, you know. So I ate and then I figured, well, I'm going to tell the uh, person at the cash register about it. Now, I had to battle with, am I being a critical or not? And, and then I decided, look, it, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So if you say, you know, by the way, um, I did have this problem with the food. That's how they can fix it. So, of course, she said, oh, that's too bad. And uh, I paid for it. I wasn't demanding my money back or anything. But maybe if two, three people, their orders don't come out as they ordered them, then maybe they'll think, hmm. So we have to, a part of my journey is standing up for myself. So I did that. Um, so then, and that was, by the way, a four star uh, local restaurant and it was, it was packed with, it was packed with locals. So I guess they like their home fries pale. Um, I am in a, uh, I'm in a travel lodge right now. I 
This is a very interesting story. You know I'm trying to travel on a shoestring. And so I um, I got off the highway, and I saw there was advertisements for motels. I got off, and then I checked my GPS to see which ones were which prices they had, how many stars. So I said, oh, Travel Lodge is good. It's got four stars, four and a half stars, at, but it's back five miles. So what do I do? I get in the car, I turn around, I go back five miles, get off the highway, and I'm looking for the place, and I can't find it. Now, there's a, a big sign that says, Travel Lodge, Hubbard, Ohio. Okay, so I pull in, I can't find the Travel Lodge. It's nothing but a parking lot full of 18 wheelers, and there's 18 wheelers going and going that way and going crossways. And I'm like, holy, where am I? So I, I call them, and they say, oh, it's on the other side of the street. So the sign is on this side of the street, and the motel is way over, way over on that side of the street. So I follow the directions and get there, and it's like in the middle of this industrial parking area. And there were some people that seemed a little, I don't know how to say it, sketchy, uh, trying to be really nice. But it was, you know, the, the sleeves torn off the T-shirts and, and the long hair. Not, not the good long hair. You know, I like men with long hair, but it was not the good. It was traveling, not the plain, shiny uh, baseball caps. And I'm like, oh, boy, did I make a mistake. But I didn't want to go back another five miles. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to stay here and i decided that instead of looking at the all men do i didn't see a woman after I, I i you know i asked the guy behind the counter is my car safe here is my stuff safe in my car and he said oh, yeah i've been here five years we've never had a problem and the place is clean i'll give you that and uh so i okay and i decided instead of looking at the uh, the men that were around me as potential threats that I would look at them as uh, my guards <laughs> taking care of me. And so that was the end of my day. This morning I got up and um, I took advantage of the breakfast, you know, continental breakfast. Yeah. And um, and they had good coffee. Yesterday's coffee, <clears throat> today's coffee, very good. Um, so I'm, I'm going to run now because I see that I've run past my plan 10 minutes, but um, I will be telling you more as I go on about um, how I've been spending, how much I've been spending. Oh, yesterday, so if you're keeping a little track of what I've been spending, I spent $20 on gas and um, uh, $9 on the so-called breakfast, and my room last night was uh, $58 included breakfast. And it really, it was clean. It was a nice room, so I had no complaint. I came in, the room was falling down, but I got the guy, and he came in, and he put it back together, so that's a good thing. All right, so I'm on my journey. Um, I'm doing well. I am um, still, you know, dealing with what I'm living with, and uh, but I think I think this was a good idea. So God bless you all, and thanks for taking with me, and I will see you tomorrow, maybe kind of like the the same time. Um, I am finding that one of the adjustments that I'm having to make is um, about time, about uh, I need to be on the road, I need to be doing this, I need to be here, I need to and, and we have to look at that in our own lives, how much pressure are we putting on ourselves for time? So I'm still in trying to unwind mode. But um, I will see you tomorrow morning. Lord willing, and the quick don't rise. Please keep me in your thoughts. And I will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye-bye.